And how will you do that from beyond the grave? Kill him. Welcome to About Time, a Doctor Who podcast. I'm Stephen, and I've been a Doctor Who fan since 2005. And I'm Ben, and I've never seen the show before. For years now, I've been trying to convince Ben to give it a go. And my answer has always been no. But now, finally, he's agreed not only to watch it with me, but to do a podcast about it as well. And quite frankly, it's It's about about time. time. to record the podcast. What if I refuse? Then you are not compatible. What happens then? Then you will be deleted. Then this podcast is pointless without me. Thank you, bye. True. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're uh, you're XP, you're the star of the show. <laughs> not the star of the show. Um, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the first episode recorded from our new abode. Yes. Yes, we've moved. Hooray! We have moved. The most painful experience to date of moving. Yeah, it was very stressful. <clears throat> it was. But yeah, we're finally here. Yeah. Although actually, by the time you hear this, we actually moved in between you hearing Tooth and Claw and School Reunion. Yeah. So yeah, we already moved actually quite a while ago to your ears. But yeah. for us, in the moment... We've been about oh, just over a week. Just over a week, yeah. Yeah. We're just about settled in. Yeah. It's definitely an improvement on the last place. Oh, 100%. Just waiting for curtains to go on off and then we'll buy some of those. Yeah. Anywho, <clears throat> how are you? Yeah, I'm okay. Tired. Yeah. We say that every week, but yeah. yeah. I've got a few more days of work and then I get Easter holidays off. So yeah, can't wait for that. I wonder what you do for a living. We know what I do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're here. We've just watched the episode that Ben predicted the title of, Rise of the Cybermen. And I don't think, judging by Ben's face, he was very impressed. My God, it was fucking painful. Okay, let's break it down. It's called Rise of the Cybermen. Yes. There was hardly any Cybermen in it. Yeah, because it was about the rise. No. It was a build-up. No, absolutely not. It should have been called The Sleep of the Cybermen. It was The a, Snores of the Cybermen. It was a build-up to reveal them just no, before the cliffhanger. absolutely not. A bit like... um, What's the next episode called? Have a guess, since you're so clairvoyant. The Cyberman Attack. No. It's called The Age of something. Cyberman. No. Age of Cyber. No. Age of Eternal Eve. No. It's called The Age of Steel. Ugh. Anywho. Um, But we'll come on to that. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so part one. Go on, just tell me your first impression. Boring. Absolutely boring. This two-parter is shite. You don't, you've only seen half of it. Yeah, but the start of it is shite. Okay, so I would compare this then to maybe Aliens of London. Yes. It's very similar. They did not learn. Because actually both of those do the same thing, don't they? Where they're the, the alien threat, or the, not that Cybermen aren't alien, but they're, they're the, the monster of the episode. They, they're hinted at and sort of danced around for the whole of the first part. And then they're revealed right at the end. And then the second part is going to be dealing with them properly. Yeah, no. It's like they can't, they're like, like, oh, we've not got enough idea for episodes. Let's just stretch this episode into two-parter. I'm sorry. Like, one of the most iconic creatures to come out of Doctor Who is the Daleks and the Cybermen. And, oh, my God, whoever thought of them ran out of ideas when it came to the voices. Exterminate, 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 delete. Delete, delete. Yeah, I, I, must, I, I agree with you on that one. Um, Cybermen t- should be mute. Yeah, they never used to, they never used to say delete in the old series. Um, I, I I remember hearing I think Russell T Davies decided he wanted them to have a catchphrase like the Daleks have exterminate because he wanted something for children to be running around shouting in the playground. But you know it is a bit cringy the whole delete thing. Yeah, especially when he says it in the cliffhanger. He says it four times in a row. The last line of the episode is just delete, 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 delete. Like, get over yourself. Yeah. (laughs) Just do it if you're going to do it. (laughs) I absolutely thought this pacing of this episode was awful. I thought, I thought Billy was just one of some of Billy's weakest acting. Okay. In this episode. Okay. Um, I thought 
David Tennant was a bit meh. And I thought, but I thought, I thought the person, Mickey yeah. was great. Actually, yeah, he is good in this one. <clears throat> He's very he good, good in this yeah. episode. We saw a different side of his acting abilities, being the dark Mickey, Ricky, Ricky, Bicky. Um, yeah, and I thought, I thought it was very well. And when he was hugging his nan, I was like, it was quite, quite touching. Yeah. Um, and I quite liked it. Yeah. Um, Obviously, I have to say, just, we always have to say, we don't approve of Noel Clark. No, we don't. As a person. We don't. We but don't. We, we can, we can comment on the acting and the, yeah. the character um, particularly. Yeah. But like, Scrap, going off the topic now, we've talked about him, we've talked about him enough. Um, Billy was really weak in this episode. Okay. So in what, in what way? In tone, in... Just everything. It just felt like she didn't resonate with the story. Um, I think it's she's a bit disconnected in that because she she's thinking about her dad and her mum and dad being together. No, like yeah, feels off. Feels really off. Maybe that's true, but like this, this feels so recycly. It's a bit unreal. Mm, what it feels Father's like Day. Father's Day, Aliens of London pacing. I feel like they've only got a handful of actors that they like to use, so let's bring them back. I'm waiting for the Savine woman to come back. No, she's not coming back. Um, yeah, I was really disappointed with this episode. This series is absolutely just really just shit, isn't it? It's just really the pacing's off. For an action show, for something that's action-y, yeah. everything happens in the in the last five minutes. Okay. And it feels so reminiscent of a previous episode. I'm like We've seen this before. This structure's been done. Like, yeah. can we see a different structure, please, for a two-parter? Yeah, I think it's safe to say you struggle with two-parters. I think it's safe to say I wouldn't struggle with two-parters if they actually didn't stretch. Like, um, the, I loved that that, that one. Uh, and, Empty Child. Yeah, I thought that was brilliantly done. Because yeah. there, there was enough story to stretch across. Yeah. There's not enough story for this, this episode to stretch it across. Maybe so. And that that is a big common thing in this. They have a concept for an episode and they try and stretch it into two episodes. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. I would have much preferred to like have an episode that is more actiony with the Cybermen than than not. Yeah. Like this is they're so iconic. And I'm predicting that the next episode will probably be better because it'll be more action y and more Yeah, I ex- I'm expecting you to like the next one better, yeah. Yeah. Anywho, that's my honest opinion on that's it. That's your that's your takedown of it. I yeah. already know when this is this is going low. Low. Okay, we'll low, come, low, 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 we'll come to that. Okay, if I had to challenge you then to say what was your favourite thing about it and don't say when it ended. I liked two bits. Okay. Out of this, I did think it came out of nowhere. One part, but okay. Oh, I obviously liked the part with Mickey and his gran. Yeah, I thought that was touching. Um, and then, so my next se- second part I really liked was when Jackie s- snapped. Oh, I love that bit. It's really um, painful to watch. It's like it's like okay, you've got a backbone, Jackie. I like this. Yeah. Uh, can we have this type of Jackie in? What, what you're talking about the bit when she said to Rose about you're just staff, yeah, yeah, that bit. see, that's so painful because Rose has slipped it, she just thinks she's sitting down talking to her mum, and then she's forgotten that this woman doesn't know her, and this woman is not her mother, she is sort of her mother, but she's not, and she's no. you know, and and money Rose deserved it, money has not um done favors for Jackie, oh, absolutely not. Jackie's one of the per- one of the type people. She's got that type of personality that money would corrupt her. Yeah. Um, surprised she has any money left because I'm surprised she hasn't spent it all. Mm. Um, but no, Jackie, I, what's her name? Camille. Camille Kajiri, yeah. Yeah. She did one of her classic fucking screams. She did. I looked Ugh. over at you when she did it. Like, it's not even that good love. Come on, give it a bit of welly. Well, it's authentic to her. I don't know if it's, I don't know if you would agree with this. There are some actors and actresses that are just destined to be supporting characters. Yeah. They're never, if they get a lead, it's probably on a TV movie or um, something like that. And I think Camille's that type of, type of actress. I think she's, yeah, she may get enough. some like TV, like, surprise, she's not been in EastEnders. 
I can see her playing a very good character in EastEnders. Yeah. But it would be a rip-off of this character in EastEnders. Mm. So, ha- so has this episode made you warm to her at all? No. More, like the actress and the way oh, she... Oh, for the actress, yeah. I, thought, I, I, thought, I thought it actually showed versatility when she snapped mm. and when she was like, actually, like she was like, she and it span really quickly. I thought that was great. Yeah. Um, she's not bad. In she my is, books, yeah, I think she's a great supporting character. Um, it would be great to see an episode where she actually goes in the TARDIS and goes on an adventure. Okay, but I don't think as we as I have found out, I got spoiled. But this is Billy's last series. Yeah, um, how did you find that out? I was packing Stephen's Doctor Who DVDs away, and um, yeah, which I, I could have done myself, but Ben was jumping the gun. But no, absolutely not. You're slow. <laughs> I'm too slow for Ben's status. Anywho, anyway, um, yeah. what was I saying? You saw the series three. Yeah, I saw DVDs. the series three DVD, and I was like, "Oh, that must be the new companion." Yeah. To be fair, I didn't know. I didn't know what series she was. And then you turned it over, and you were like, "Oh, and there's a man." There is a man. There is a man. Yeah. Um, and what else? Because I I have worked out a little bit. Oh God, here we go. Theories. So, Got to get my poker face ready. So. I know that Catherine Tate is the third companion. Okay. You might be surprised on that, actually. Because she is Tennant's last companion. What makes you think that? Because I think Tennant only did two series. Okay. He did this series, that three series. Okay. Because he left when Thingy Majiggy left. And then a new, a new doctor came in when Thingy joined. When you so thingamajiggy was Russell T Davies and thingy was Stephen Moffat, just to translate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll see, you'll find out. Yeah. Um, but back on Jackie momentarily, I just wanted to say that she she does get an episode later on in the series where she really she really gives the best performance of her whole time on the show. Oh, so yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing for you seeing that. Um, so Roger Lloyd Pack was in this episode. I don't think you're the biggest fan of him anyway. Are he's you? okay. I just think he's a little bit same. A little bit samey. He's a um, little bit his his voice acting is a little bit I don't know. He does have a strange way of speaking. Oh sorry, did because he's de- dead now, yeah. but we'll best his Like son. my favourite obviously has got my favourite of him has got to be Owen Vicar Dib. In Vicar of Dibley, yes. Um I'm sorry I'm late, I've my hand stuck up a cow. Yeah. I just feel like this had no light or shade. But that's the character that he was. He was... I think he, he plays quite a good... Manic. ...villain in that way. Like, yeah, because he's... He, that, that's his whole point. He is almost a bit like the creations that he's making. Like, these emotionless yeah. things. And he's sort of cold and, you know... Yeah. Almost mechanical in himself. But the thing is, though, if he's... Is he planning to do this himself? Um, You'd have to wait and wait, watch the next episode. Because to answer that, the doctor said it's painful. They had yeah. all the motion stripped because it's painful. Is it continuously painful? Because it can't be. I don't think the brain has any pain receptors. I don't think. I don't think the brain has any like nerve endings that in that type of way. Mm. I don't know because it's a different type of tissue. I don't know if the brain has nerve endings and can feel pain. Please let me know. Yeah, because. Lobotomy was a thing. Oh yeah, and they touched the brain a lot. And like, I don't, oh god, that makes my skin crawl. The thought of that. Yeah, and I don't think like, did the I don't think the brain was the thing that caused the pain. I think it was the skull and the bone because bone has nerve endings in it, doesn't it? Does it? I swear, if you break a bone, that hurts. Yeah, I assume I that was. Pretty, I don't know. I'm not medically <laughs> not medically savvy. Trained. Um, but no, actually, that leads me on to a discussion I wanted to have about the Cybermen. As a concept, mm-hmm. um, because when the Cybermen were conceived in the sixties, uh-huh. um, it was very much this idea of so they were bringing in things like pacemakers and like technology, like bionic limbs, maybe like to augment the body and to help people live longer and so on. Uh-huh. And I guess from that there was this thought of like where where can that where will that go in the future? How far will technology take us? Like to to preserve our lives and mm. and everything. And the idea with the Cybermen is that that gets taken to the extreme. And the Cybermen are, they're very much cyborgs. They're partly organic and partly 
robotic. Why, why are you doing that face? I agree that they are cyborgs. Very loose. But you, are you basing that on what you've just seen? Because is there flesh underneath the metal? No. See, this is the discussion I want to have. In, in the original Cybermen, yes. I believe there was a lot more of the human body as part of it. Mm. It was very much a mixture. Yeah. And then in this iteration, they've just taken a brain and they've jammed mm. it inside a suit. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really call them cyborgs in a sense. I would say they are, they are probably cyborgs in a very broad sense, but like... I mean, the brain is organic. A, they, yeah, but there's not enough yeah. for me. Yeah. Like, there, there comes a point when, like, if you're over 90% robot, you're a robot. I don't know. You could have that discussion. But, yeah, my, my point that I wanted to make was that, really, I prefer the concept of the Cybermen as much more fleshy and body horror, you know, yeah. much because I think it's more visceral. Yeah, I don't like this idea, like, they take a brain... And um, they shove it into a metal shell and then suddenly they're, oh, look, it's this like organic robot. They're not really organic, are they? Mm. Because they don't, the brain, what the brain is not working on its own. It's not got freedom of thought. It's not got anything. It is controlled. Well, exactly. I mean, Lumic was saying about the brain is what makes us human. But what's he gone and done? He's he stripped, stripped out the all the emotions. Man. So he's no better than the man who created the Daleks. Exactly. Do I think that they've missed the mark with the Cybermen? A little bit. Do I wish that they would have, like, made them a bit more... Like, I would have much preferred that these these suits are... That's exactly what they are, they're suits. Hmm. And, like, maybe it would be quite cool to have, like, a bit of an iRobot type of situation where one goes rogue um, and they he helps the Doctor or she helps the Doctor or they help the Doctor. Like, mm. that could be quite a cool idea. But it just feels... It feels very generic. I feel, I feel like there's no boundaries pushed in this episode. Mm. We've not... We've not learned very much. There's been no exploration in... Roses and the Doctor's relationship, nor I personally think would I would have loved to see the Doctor actually go after Mickey. Mm. And but he go, would never do that. No, he would never do that. Rose but that his... would have been that would have been brilliant. Like to see the Doctor to actually experience. Oh my God! Give him the moment. Give him. Give Rick Mickey Ricky Mickey Moo. <laughs> um, give him the moment to 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 we see his backstory. Because a lot of pe- characters, maybe a lot of people when they first saw it, were like, well, Mickey, you're, you're a bit of a pointless character. You add nothing to the show. Where, the, where if we saw him go into the backstory, it would have been, ah, we would have we would have cared for Mickey. And we do care for Mickey a little bit because of what we saw him do. And But we, the thing is, though, he is a sacrificious lamb and he's going to die. Mickey's like, gonna die. Yeah, and we and the reason why we saw him with his grand is because he was building up, we're building up that ah ah Mickey oh Ricky oh, and then we're building up that. So when when he actually does perish, because they're gonna kill they're gonna kill Thingy off, not Rose. Basically, they want someone to kill off, but it can't be the Doctor and it can't be Rose. If they killed Rose off, they would have too many complaints. And they really? would never, they would have, they wouldn't be, yeah, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't be able to bring her back if they needed to or they wanted to. Um, so yeah. Okay. Interesting. But I do think, I do think that it would have been a stronger episode if we saw the doctor go with Mickey. Mickey. And when, when he sees Rose in the party, he could have been like, I need to get in there. Blah, blah, blah. And that would have been so dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But I don't. I just I should don't be a writer on this show. Yeah, I just don't think he would because we know the Doctor is obsessed with Rose, and yeah. he's she's going to be his priority. Yeah, but maybe she ran off, and he didn't see where she went, and then he has to go with Mickey. Yeah, but this is all like it's all it all ties into like you know at the beginning when Mickey had his finger on that button for half an hour because mm. they'd forgotten about him. Yeah, like he has no place with them. Yeah, but the thing is though that would have changed. It, that would it would have they could have created a relationship, yeah. Um, and they could have come out of the TARDIS, and they would be finding Rose. I can't find Rose. And Mickey was like, "Do you know what? I'm off. I'm going to go and I've got 24 hours. I'm going to go. I'll meet you back at the TARDIS in 24 hours time." And the Doctor doesn't want to be on his own, so he goes off with him. See, 
it could have worked. Anywho. Yeah, this episode is obviously set in a parallel world. Mm. Um, were you interested to see that? It's not as well done as Marvel, is it? Oh, fuck Marvel. No, they're a billion pound industry filmmaking yeah. company. This is 2006 television. Yeah. This is pre-smartphone, pre-YouTube. Just, just to about. remind you how far long ago this was. Yeah. I don't know. It, for me, it just felt weird. It felt like they were trying to do a parallel. Ooh, what should we do to make it parallel? Zeppelins. Let's add Zeppelins. Yeah. Isn't that, don't they have that in his dark materials? I don't know. Um... I once uh, started a Zeppelin business, but it never really took off. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> this is what I live with. This type of humour. People might find it funny. Yeah. I love those kind of jokes, though. Um, if anyone's seen um, Nan's Christmas Carol, the Catherine Tate special, um, and, they, and this, they've seen the behind the scenes video, they were all playing this game behind the scenes where you make jokes in the format of, I've got a new business. And then the other person says, what's the business? And you say like, I've got, I've got a new business. Okay. What's the business? I make towels. Okay. How's business? It's all drying up. Yeah, exactly. There you go. See, those jokes are funny. We should play more of those. That was a good one for me. That was. You came up with one at the spur of the moment. <laughs> sort of oh, you saw a towel behind towel, me. And I was like, what does it do? It dries. Well done. Oh, let me think of another one. I've got a new business. Oh God, what? I make toilet seats. How's business? Gone Going down shit. the path? Oh, gone to shit. Okay. Okay, I've got a new business. What's your business? I make yo-yos. How's business? Up and down. That's a good one. <laughs> anyway, write in if you've got a good one. Let us know what your new business is. Anyway, what were we talking about? Zeppelins? Yeah, parallel world, yeah. I think, I, I guess, to be honest, I think the reason they set it in a parallel world is because the Cybermen exist in our universe, in Doctor Who, um, and the Doctor's met them before, but to give them a Genesis story, they 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 had a parallel version. This is a this is a entirely separate. It just happens to be the same thing. Do we meet the ones in our world? Maybe like way down the line, but you don't need to worry about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's I think that's the idea. My favorite aliens of this season so far. Yeah. Let me guess. The Catmans. The Catmans. I knew it would be. And even then you thought were underused. Yes. I love anything with the sisterhood. Like sisterhood of magic, sisterhood of travelling pants. <laughs> no. I, that is a real thing. I know it is. I've, I never I've watched it, it yeah. but like, no, I, like, I just love um, this idea of like sisterhood and brotherhoods. They're just, I just love that idea. Yeah. Isn't someone from Gilmore Girls in that? I don't know. Alexis Bedell, maybe. Possibly. I think so. She's in, she was in, oh, Tuck Everlast, Everlasting Tuck? Tuck. What? Tuck Everlasting. I don't know what that is. It's about a girl who meets a boy. Wow, sounds so original. <laughs> Andrew Blue Bluger Keenan? Is that what? how you say his name? What? Andrew Bulger Keenan. Oh, that on, but on Instagram. Yeah. One who's got a very short body. <laughs> okay. His body is very weirdly proportioned. Okay. So is mine. I'm just gonna say I'm sure he speaks highly of you too. Yeah. Um, he's attractive, don't get me wrong. Oh, he is, yes. Yeah, so he's the one he's I'm thinking of. He's husband, though. Okay, anyway. I like dark hair and blue eyes. Um, speaking of which, do you want to... Have you got any hotties? Speaking of which, yeah, you do have dark hair and blue eyes. No, that wasn't what I was going to say. Oh. I was like, <laughs> have you got any hotties of the week? Oh, hotties of the week. Yeah, one of the homeless people. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, the one in the beanie? Yeah. Oh, my God. The one on the right, the one on the right left. On the right left? When they're marching and... On the left, right? The- the light, yeah. And the one with the beanie. I don't know. The one with the beanie and the beard. And then also the man who tried to warn him is quite, quite hot. Yeah, Jake, the, yeah. who's part of the preacher's gang. Yeah. Now, do you know who that is? No. So that is Andrew Hayden Smith, who used to present on CBBC. Do you remember? No. No? No. You don't recognise him? No. He was a kid's TV presenter from our um, childhood. I only remember a few. Okay. Who do you remember? Angelica? Yes, I remember Angelica. I remember the lady who went, who was presenting and then went to Smart. Oh, the blonde one, blonde the northern one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can I tell Dick you who, Dom? Two that I remembered, who I also fancy the pants off. Um, Barney. Don't Barney know. Harwood. No. And um, Ian Sterling. Do you know who that is? The one who's with Hacker, the Scottish one. 
he is gorgeous and he he's now like the voice of love island he's like hello and welcome to love island i can't do this voice very well but you know he's gorgeous anyway steven and, yeah oh he's gorgeous oh he's gorgeous anyway back to andrew hayden smith yeah he's gay as well okay um he was in cucumber okay dean hooked up with him yeah. um that is his name dean isn't it i think it's been a while since we've watched it yeah, I can't watch it. We will. We will watch it again. No. I know it's traumatising, but we will watch it again. That episode six. Yeah. To spoil, sorry. <laughs> People haven't watched it. Well, you don't know what... No one's... You haven't said what happens, but I'm sure anyone interested has probably seen it by yeah. now. Yeah, so that's Andrew Hayden Smith. Um, what the fuck fashion, Stephen? Go on then. What the fuck was Jackie wearing when you first saw her? Oh, yes, you did say. What Some loungy 1920s loungy polyester silk trimmed in shit piece of crap and when she was in her fancy dress why the fuck was her bust up against her chin why was she why was she wearing something that was born out of the regency period it was parallel fashion parallel earth fashion i don't know free the boobs free the boobs I from the you, corsets i thought you were going to comment on them um, the um Awful, like, Bluetooth earpieces. Oh, they're absolutely disgusting, Stephen. I know. They look like they just got a bit of chewing gum, shoved it in their ears. Yeah. Oh, let's make it look good. Diamond encrusted. Ooh. They're not very, um... Sleek. Futuristic. They're not very sleek. They're, they're no, they're clunky, not. Clunky, yeah. They're not. That looked so cheap. And how the fuck did the BBC say, oh, yeah, you spent our budget really well. No, you fucking well didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Stop making me laugh because I've got a car. Literally, I'm sorry. <laughs> like the head of the head of costume design was like, oh, go down to uh, ITV and see if they've got anything from Downton that we can use. No, Downton has better taste than that. You when did get Downton Abbey from... start? Around about this time. It ended was it? in 2007. It what? I think it ended in. 2000... It ended in 2007. I think so. Yeah. Oh wow! I didn't realize it was that long ago. It was or was I at uni when it ended? Maybe it started in 2007. Yeah, possibly. I don't know. But I do like that show. That's a good show. We should fact check that. Yeah, it's a good show. But no, I was really shocked. I know, visually. Like, it looked yeah. ugly. It looked disgusting. It looked cheap. Mm. It looked, like, literally, like, I could see all the boning in her in her dress. I'm allergic to polyester silk. Okay. Blech. What did you think of, visually, of the design of the Cybermen? They're a bit boring, aren't they? A little bit. I'm, I have mixed feelings about these Cybermen because... They look, they look like they've got tweeny feet. Tweeny feet? Yeah, have you ever seen the tweenies? Of course I have. Oh, here we go. Yet another children's TV mention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, look. Like, they, if you look at a tweenies they've foot... They've got massive, massive yeah. shoes. Yeah. And then if you look at a tweenies foot, That's massive what I mean. shoes. I'm thinking of the tweenies. They've got massive shoes. Yeah. And then yeah. they have massive shoes. Yeah. They were like, they were like oh, what, what cast do we have to... To make the feet for the Cybermen. Oh, the tweenies. Okay. Cyber tweenies. Um, yeah, I have mixed feelings about these Cybermen because they're nostalgic for me because they were my introduction to the Cybermen. But they are, they're a bit clunky. Yeah. And they, for some reason, their legs look like they're wearing flared trousers, like they're from the 70s. Yeah. Um, Do you know what annoys me about them? Mm. Is like they needed a lot of them. Mm. So they went, that impacted on... They all look cheap. Where if they went, if they only had like, if they did what they did with the Savine, where the Savine was like, they only had like one or, they had like three or four yeah. Savine's costumes. Savine's aren't that bad. They still are bad, but they look 10 times better than a Cyberman does. And like, mm -hmm. the Daleks look amazing. Yeah, the Daleks look Because we, they knew the Daleks are so iconic, they needed to get it right. Yeah. But no, yeah, I was just a bit like, I'm just a bit underwhelmed because like this is supposed to be a most like, one of the most iconic creatures yeah. to come out of the it's show. It's the thing, like the Cybermen, they are iconic, but they're not, they don't have, they don't have the same like unaltering silhouette that the Daleks have. Yes. Like, there, there are certain things about a Cyberman design which, which always remain, which are like the handlebars on the head. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that, that's, that's iconic. And then that kind of eye shape, there are those round eyes with like a teardrop in the corner is quite... Quite common. Okay. Um, I do quite like the faces actually in this version. Like they're quite skull-like, mm. um, in like a futuristic way. Yeah. I don't know. 
I just feel a bit like... But you could tell with the voice and like the light, the blue light in the mouth, you could tell they were thinking about merchandise and toys and like, you mm. know, did you ever see the Cyberman voice change a helmet? No. Yeah, it was a thing that you could buy, like you could put it on your head and then talk and your voice would sound like a Cyberman. Stephen, do you know what I wanted at this time in my life? Maybe actually, maybe this was a bit... How old was I? How old this? Uh, 14, 15. Maybe a bit later. But like, did you ever see those Hulk gloves? You no. put your, they're massive. You put your hands in them and you hit something and it makes it, it said, makes a noise. Okay. I wanted those forever. I think you mentioned that when we were talking about Margaret Sladeen's arm. Never had them. Uh, Always wanted them. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Daleks. Um, What are they called? Cybermen. Cyber. Shit. Yeah. How do they take a shit? Oh, no, they're not. They don't have bodily functions like that. They just shit on nuts and bolts. No, they don't shit at all. The brain needs nourishment. Like what? It needs fuel. Oh, that's true, actually. We eat to nourish our brain and our hearts and our organs. Yeah. So it needs some organic nourishment. And oxygen. And oxygen to survive. See, this is why I don't like it being just the brain jammed inside a metal suit. Because in the, work. the classic Cybermen, there was definitely a lot of respiratory stuff going on because traditionally... They um, breathe. Yeah, and traditionally gold was like their weakness and it clogged up their, their chest units, which was where they breathed. And like you could defeat them with gold. Oh my God. What? Seems that they've wasted, a, they've destroyed a very good character, a very good alien. Yeah, maybe. Or not alien, but whatever. I'm just a bit sad that they're not as good as they... I was looking forward to them. I know. They just seem a bit... They see, it, it, This episode just, just, just has not hit a mark. No, it... And I bet, like, when people are watching it, they're like, God, we waited so long to see the Cybermen, and this is what they give us as a first yeah, entry. I don't know. I think, I think it was very different back then. The story is all over the place. It's we like didn't a have, squibbly mind map. We didn't have all this streaming stuff back then. We didn't have so much, like... Like things like Marvel Cinematic Universe weren't around, like the films. Yeah. Um, and people were just a lot more accepting of what was on their TV, I think. But it was massive. The show was massive. It was an event. Each Saturday night was an event, and people would talk about it on Monday. I'm sure adults and children. I never speak about it. No, because you were living under a rock, obviously. No, I was living under a thing called. Uh... Don't want to watch your shit. Yeah. Can I just please take you through a few of my favourite moments and lines that I wrote down? So one of my favourite bits is um, is so camp. It's right in the beginning when that scientist is saying about how he'll need to report it to Geneva. And um, Roger Lloyd Pack, John Lumick just says, And how will you do that? From beyond the grave. <laughs> just, I think, I remember at the time on the forums that became like a massive joke like people would just start threads being like how will you read this beyond the grave exactly yeah it's very funny and then my brain is weird but i i ba- i can hardly ever see the number 40 without hearing jackie's voice going 40 it says 40 <laughs> <laughs> oh my god why did you just, that's you use your mum's voice i know it sounded like my mum <laughs> that's no that's that's what you use when you you when you're doing your mum that's but <laughs> that's <sounds> wrong. <laughs> when you're doing the voice of your mum. When I'm doing an impression of my mum. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh yeah, you know when um when Rose was um obsessing over Pete on the phone, mm. and then um she was saying to the doctor about oh he's he's got a house blah blah blah. And the doctor grabbed her phone and was like, "Give me that phone." And that's like when I get obsessed with negative comments on TikTok or something. That's you. To me, you're like, give me that phone. Well, I'll never take the phone off you. No. But I'm literally, don't get me started on social media. Yeah. The toxic, mm. the toxicity that has been experienced within this community is absolutely shocking. Yeah. I don't get involved in it. I don't have access to the the Twitter. I don't have access to any of it. Like for me, you, you don't hear anything from me. Anything you see on Instagram, or on TikTok or whatever it is, that's all Stephen. Um, but do, do, I do hear about all the negative and I do hear about, about all the good. Um, yeah, there is a lot of good. There is a lot, yeah. a lot of good, but there but, the, is... but the, unfortunately the way our brains are wired, the negative has a lot more impact yeah. than the positive. And I saw but a yeah. video, I should, I should have saved it, but I can't find it anymore. It was mm. very good. 
It was about like, if you focus on the negative, your cup fills up with darkness. If you focus on the positive, it wash, it dilutes the darkness until it's manageable. Mm. Quite, quite, was quite clever. Anywho. Yeah. Okay. It's time to rank the episode. Where's it going to go on your big list? Can I have joint? Oh, no. Oh. No, you've got to choose. You've got to choose a place. 19th. That's the bottom. That is the bottom. So this is the worst episode you've seen to date. Yes. Worse than Aliens. It has an it, it, it didn't move the storyline with Rose and the Doctor on. Mm-hmm. It it focused on the immaterial. It didn't didn't give me any good warm feelings. It didn't give me any. It gave me a little bit like here and there, like oh, oh but not enough. Okay. Aliens of London. We had my fave Doctor. Yeah, Harriet um, Jones as well. Harriet Jones, like we had, we had good characters. Yeah, um, that would it's still not my favorite episode, but would make the episode much more enjoyable than this episode. This episode was actually very weak as a starter, and whoever wrote it, I feel like this is not your day job. Tom, something or other. Tom McRae, yeah. It just feels, it just feels like we, you have not learned from your previous episodes that this structure does not work. This, this, oh, what are they? Woo, we're building up to a big reveal. Yeah. You no. say, you say it doesn't work, but that, that's your, that's your opinion. It doesn't. I think, that's I your think, taste. That's, I think a big reveal should have happened probably about midpoint of this episode. Um, so we know the threat and then build up the threat bigger to the end. So the ending's really impactful yeah. rather than rush it all. Yeah, maybe. Anywho, 90th it is. So bottom of the bottom. Mm hmm. For you. Okay. Um, I'm going to be a bit more generous because uh, I think it's I think it's better than... Actually, am I going to be that much more generous? Because I've got the long game bottom, which I definitely think this is better than the long game. Um, then I've got New Earth, which, again, I enjoy New Earth. So it's really tough. What is New Earth? The cat nuns? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it's tough for me because the, even the ones that are right at the bottom of my list at the moment, I don't hate at all by any stretch of the imagination. So just because I put it down low doesn't mean I hate it. But I think... You like it less than other episodes, though. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And I'm sure there will be others coming up in the future that go way below. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it... I think I'm putting it above School Reunion. My God! <laughs> you are generous. This is a god-awful episode and you're being very generous. Maybe not, actually. You're convincing me. Take it down. It's very slow moving. I'm blinded by nostalgia. You are. You are. And I'm Maybe blinded, you shouldn't rank things. And I'm blinded by knowing the second part. And I think I'm thinking of it as a story as a whole. Oh, okay. So I've got to try and just focus on this episode on its own. Is it better or worse than Aliens of London? I think you're right. Harriet Jones makes it better. She does because Penelope Walton is just a yeah. goddess. So, all right then, for me, it's... It's 18 for me. It goes only above the long game. Number 18, second from the bottom. That's where I'm going to put it. So that was that. Part two, we'll hopefully watch in a couple of days. Yeah. Um, we already, you've already told you it's called The Age of Steel. You have. Um, and obviously it's all about like the rise of more Cybermen and like steel encompassing in their body in the steel. I'm a bit sad that after hearing all about the old side men that they didn't go with that. I know. It's a bit sad. But I am planning for us to watch an old side men episode soon. So just before we wrap up, I just wanted to um, read out a little question that was sent in to us by a friend of the pod, Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Thanks for your question. So Aaron wants to know um, if you were to create an ideal TARDIS team, so Doctor and Companion, either one or two Companions, up to you. Um, who would you like to see as your Doctor and Companions? So like actors, what would your ideal be? Um, Aaron says, personally, um, I'd love to see Whoopi Goldberg as the Doctor. <laughs> and for a Companion, I think Jonathan Bailey, the fit one from Bridgerton. <laughs> okay. Aaron, 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 Aaron. Let's get it correct. Who's the fit one from Bridgerton? It's Jonathan Bailey. No. It is. No. Luke Newton, N- Newtown, Newt. Let me get his name right. And he- you can sh- show me a picture as well. Yeah, that's right. Luke Newton. Can I see a picture? Oh, he's, he's okay. He's handsome. 
But Jonathan Bailey, ugh, he's he's gorgeous. No, and Benedict, the actor who plays Benedict, oh, he's good. He, Jonathan Bailey ranks third in my taste. Oh, in the really? Okay. Brothers. Okay. The Bridgerton Brothers, oh, th- he is third. He is still very attractive. Yeah. But um, and I would have totally loved to see him in Heartstopper play um, Mr. Farouk. Um, but um, who would you like? Who would I like to see as the Doctor? Doctor and companion together. That's the point. Um, off the top of my head, like mm. there's a Anthony Head. As the doctor, yeah, mm. he would have been. I think he could have done a very cool, like, very analytical, very dry humor type of a doctor, yeah, very opposite to what Tennant's doing is this wacky, loopy, in, almost insane. Um, I could see Anthony Head, maybe not now, but maybe like 10, 15, just years after ago. he did Buffy, Buffy, yeah, go into, he should have been. If, if Chris Eccleston didn't do it, he could have been for the first doctor, yeah, he would have been good, yeah. but um. Have you got any ideas? I do. I'm waiting to hear what you say first. No, you carry on. I need thinking now. Okay, so mine, we watched a programme on Disney Plus called Extraordinary. Oh, yeah. And um, it's, it's very Solid good. Solid three stars. It, well, it's, it's good. We I would recommend it. It's about, um, it's a world where everybody, once they become an adult, they get their own unique superpower and it sort of becomes, it gets given to you. Um, and this this main character doesn't have a power and she feels like there's something wrong with her. Um, it's a bit like Encanto. Y- well, yes, exactly. It sounds like it, but it's it's a, it's a very much an adulty sort of... Take on it. Teen sort of... It's, it's quite... It's teen drama, I would say. Rude humour as well. Like, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, right. it's good. I, um, I would recommend it. But anyway, um, the actor Luke Rollison, who mm. plays Jizz Lord... <laughs> Mm. in that I think he's got a very doctorish quality about him it'd be great mm. and actually funny enough the girl what's her name the Irish one. Oh yeah 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 Mairead Tyres I think her name mm. is um, she'd be a great companion funnily she enough she's like I, f- I feel like found her like a cross between Ashling B the comedian mm. and Karen Gillan who mm. obviously has been a companion mm. um, so her and then Luke Rollison as the doctor would be Actually, maybe they'd be too close to Eleven and Amy, to be honest. But I just, I think it would be cool. Eleven and Amy? Yeah, eleventh, the Eleventh Doctor and Amy. Oh. Yeah, no, I, I, I could totally see them being the Doctor and the Companion. I could totally, totally see Mairead being the Doctor. Yeah. And like, be like this, like, I give no shit. Yeah. Let's go in, guns blazing, and let's <laughs> just get it done. Um... So I can't get her name. Oh, Nicola. Who do you think she's of? also in Bridgerton? Coughlin. 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 Yeah. Um, Nicola Coughlin. Nicola Coughlin. I think that's. It. I'm sorry if that doesn't say your name, but yeah. Anywho. Um. Yeah. I love her in Bridgerton. I love. I think I loved her in Derry Girls as well. Right. Um. She was fantastic, and she's Irish as well. Yeah. Um, love her. Don't see her as the doctor, but I could see her being like a great companion, like a bit like a hybrid, maybe more like the airhead that she plays in, um, like a like a smart airhead. I love that type of character where they 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 have this a bit like a legally blonde where they have this amina where they think like oh I'm like and then actually no I'm very smart yeah um and like what people don't know is that um you know in legally blonde that she gets a 179. Mm. That's a near perfect score. Yeah. On the SATs. The thing with, with things like that is it's, you say airhead, but it's, it just goes to show that you can be interested in stereotypically girly, feminine sort of quote unquote lowbrow things like celebrities and nails yeah. and hair and stuff. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're not smart. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Like it, is I think it's the opposite. I think it's yeah. like you're, I, yeah, anyway. We anyway, we're going off on a major tangent there. Anyway, are we are we um done for the day? Yeah. I couldn't think of any doctors. It's okay, you can think of any if you think of any, you can say in the next episode. Mm. But thank you for the question, Aaron. It's always appreciated to give us something to talk about. And anyone else who fancies messaging him with a question, yeah. Um, let us know. Sorry if my voice is getting a bit croaky, if you can hear that. I've got another um, question for the viewers. Listeners. Viewers. Listeners. Viewers. Okay, I was just going to have to agree to disagree. What's your question? My question is, if you had to make an inanimate object 
into an alien threat, what would it be and why? Okay. Like a... Blender. Lampshade. Lampshade. Yeah. Yeah. Light bulb. Light bulb. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. It's not a very great question, so Stephen can cut it if he wants to. No, it's fine. Anywho, I'm going to say... Stay fantastic. Stay fantastic. Can't go beyond that. No. I'm going to say it too. Thanks for listening and tune in. Hopefully Ben will enjoy the next episode a little bit more. Um, but yeah, don't forget you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at About Time Cast, on TikTok at About Time Podcast. You can email us at abouttimecast at gmail.com um, and we'll see you next time. We Until will. then, stay fantastic. fantastic.